Okay, how you doing? We're going to talk about setting an absolute value uh, equivalent to another absolute value. Uh, and what we need to work off of here is the absolute value theorems, which are that if you have the absolute value of any expression that it is equivalent to, okay, to some other expression, we'll just let B represent that quantity, that the absolute value inside of the absolute value symbols is going to be equivalent to whatever that B was, so it's like the absolute value was never there, and, okay, we also have to say, okay, that the, the expression is also equal to the opposite of whatever that expression is, okay? You can't get hung up on what the expression is. The point is here is that you just have to apply what it's stating. So this is just stating that whatever the expression is, you set whatever's inside the absolute value directly equal to or you take the opposite of whatever that expression is. So in this case, what we have here is that we've got an absolute value, okay, of 8x plus 2 is equivalent to an absolute value of 6x minus 5. Now, the thing about this one that you have to understand here is, is that I've got an absolute value equivalent, okay, an absolute value equivalent to whatever the other expression is. So, for this particular one, I have an absolute value on the left side, and I also have an absolute value on the right side. This theorem doesn't matter what, where the absolute value is. All that matters is that you apply it correctly. So, what we need to do is we need to take it as, I'm just going to use the 8x plus 2. So what I'm going to say here is that, okay, let's take what's inside the absolute value, which is 8x plus 2, okay, and we're going to set it equal to, all right, whatever the opposite expression was. So it doesn't matter that it's an absolute value. You can't get hung up on that part. It's whatever this is. So I'm setting it equal to the absolute value of 6x minus 5. Okay? I also then need to do it again to the opposite of that. So when I come up here is I go, okay, let's take that same exact expression where 8x plus 2 is equivalent to. Now the negative, so the opposite of, the absolute value of 6x minus 5. And now what I have here is that that theorem directly applies. So what I have here is essentially that this n is equivalent to some b, and here's my n being equivalent to the opposite of whatever that b was. So I hope you can, under, you can see that here. All right, so the problem is, is that when I do this, all right, there's still an absolute value problem left in the equation. Well, I just go through that same process all over again. So now I go back to, well, this is now my n, and this is now my b. Because by using this, stating this theorem, it allowed me to get rid of the absolute value of this one because I created two new problems for the opposites. Now the problem that was created is that I made a new, another problem that still left absolute values. So I had to get rid of those. So again, I just get to apply this absolute value theorem, except now this is my n, this is my b. This is my n, and this is my b. So here we go. I take 6x minus 5, which is my n, and I set it equal to the b as it's read, 8x plus 2. Okay? Then again, okay, I've still got this 6x plus 5, or minus 5, sorry. So I'm just going to write it right below it. So the 6x minus 5, and now it's equal to the opposite of whatever my b was. So I'm going to stick my b, which is going to represent the quantity, of 8x plus 2, okay? And then these are the two problems I'm going to solve. Over here, okay, this is the next one. Just utilizing the property, we need to note that the property doesn't have a negative out in front, so what I need to do is get rid of this negative. Well, a negative in front of any sign that doesn't have a value is always negative 1. So this right here, this negative, is really a negative 1. So to get rid of a negative 1, it's negative 1 times the absolute value, so I'm just going to divide by negative 1. So if I divide everything by negative 1, I'm left with the expression negative 8x minus 2 equals the absolute value of 6x minus 5. Okay? Solving now using the theorem, okay, I now have a positive absolute value equivalent to some statement. So now I now can say whatever's in here is going to be equivalent to whatever this is. Okay? So I take inside, so I get 6x. 6x minus 5 is now going to be equal to 
negative 8x minus 2. I then say that 6x minus 5 is equivalent to the opposite of whatever my expression was. So here's my expression, negative 8x minus 2. Now let's take the opposite of it, so negative 8x minus 2. Okay, and I put the negative outside. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simplify all the expressions. All right, so simplifying this one to start with. Okay? If I distribute a negative through, okay, for this particular one, what I want you to note is that if a negative times 8x is negative 8x, and a negative times a negative 2, it, it gives me the positive 2, it gives me negative 2. Well, if I come over here, this is going to actually simplify to that statement. Okay, I hope you can see that. All right? So it's not like I'm going to need to do this problem. And this one here, okay, if you look at it, the negative times a negative makes a positive 8x. Well, I have that over there. And the negative times the negative makes it a positive 2. So this one actually simplified to this. So while I have four equations here, what I need to note is that a couple of these are the same. Now, will this always occur? Yes. This will always occur for these particular types, where I have an absolute, uh, in the e, absolute value equal to an absolute value. Now, this could change, though, is if I put a, another number adding or subtracting outside this absolute value. But I haven't done that yet. So what I want you to note here is that really what I have are my two equations of 6x minus 5 equals 8x plus 2, and 6x minus 5 equals negative 8x minus 2. Okay, and those are the ones I'm going to need to solve simply because this one simplified to this one, and this one simplified to that one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to erase these ones. Okay, it's important that you still create them. All right, it's a concept, it's an idea. But notice some things so you don't have to do so much work. So what I now have here... Okay, are really two equations that were really formed. I had two repeating equations. So this one up here I'm going to go ahead and now and solve for x, and this one I'm going to solve for x, and then those are going to be my answers. Now remember, the important thing is here is that I had two extra problems. So really what I'm doing is creating problems with four answers, but two of them are going to repeat. Okay? So here we go. Let's go ahead and solve this. So I add the 5. Okay, back down to 1. Add the 5. We're going to do it all in one step, minus 8x, minus 8x, okay? If this doesn't um, bother anyone who's watching this, but uh, essentially what happened is negative 5 plus 5 goes away. 6x minus 8x is negative 2x, which is equivalent to 8x minus 8x is 0. 2 and 5 make 7. I go ahead and I divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2, and I'm left with x being equivalent to negative 3.5. Okay, I'm just going to leave it in decimal form as opposed to uh, uh, rational form, which is the fraction. So I'm left with x equals negative 3.5. I come over here to this one, do the same thing. I'm going to do uh, plus 8x, plus 8x. I'm going to do plus 5, plus 5. So 6 and 8 makes 14x, which is equivalent to the negative 5 and 5 cancel, uh, cancel out. The negative 8 and the 8 cancel out. Negative 2 and 5 makes a positive 3. Divide by 14. Divide by 14. And I'm left with x equals 3 14 And this one, I'm just going to leave in fraction form. Okay. Now, it's also important that you always go back and check your answer to make sure that it works out correctly. Uh, for this one, I've already checked them um, outside this video. Um, and I find, you, you'll find out that they do work. Um, but if you wanted to, you would just plug negative 3.5 in, 8 times negative 3.5, add 2, and you should and take the absolute value of whatever you get. Then it would, should be equivalent to 6 times negative 3.5, subtract 5, take the absolute value, and you should get the same answer. And then the same thing with this one, you just plug it in. Um, but that's how you do absolute value, equivalent to an absolute value. So I hope that helps with whatever you're trying to work on.